detailing parts for scale models. What are they? Um, a lot of people refer to these as aftermarket parts. In other words, aftermarket companies make parts to add on to an existing model to make the detail better, bring it up to you know contest quality level. We're going to take a look today in particular at photo etch parts and resin detailing parts. Um, I have tools laid out here. I picked out a model and I picked out some accessories that are made to go with that model. So what we'll do is first we'll look at the tools that are involved and how you use them and then we'll do some practical application putting some of these parts into the model. So let's get down to it and check out scale detailing parts. Once you've chosen the subject, in this case it's a Heinkel 111 in 132 scale, I take a look around and see what manufacturers make aftermarket parts for this kit. And what I found this time was four different manufacturers, Edward, Ares, Quick Boost, and Aero Bonus. Each one made accessories to go with this kit. In the case of Edward, they're photo etch sets. As you can see, I have um, a cockpit set here for the Heinkel 111. I also found an exterior set a set of seat belts, and a nice set of undercarriage details for the landing gear. I found some resin and brass photo etch parts from Ares, and this is an armament set, which means it's got the machine guns and equipment in those areas of the airplane covered. Uh, I also found from Quick Boost a set of exhaust stacks to go on the engines that are more accurate and already drilled out. Really sharp stuff. And finally I found a figure, and there's also other figures, but this is a German World War II bomber crewman. And I think I'm going to convert him and put him into the airplane and maybe pick up a couple others as well. So do a little search online, um, find out what manufacturers make what accessories for your set, for your kit, and then pick them out and you're ready to go. Sometimes you get lucky and you can buy a kit that has everything in it already. This Blue Max Faults kit from the movie The Blue Max includes the plastic parts for the kit. It includes a really nice photo etch set that has machine gun jackets, seat belts, and so forth. It has figures, two resin figures, of the movie characters, which you can see on the box here. It also includes two really nice bags of resin parts. And these parts are included so that you can do either an accurate faults from World War I or the movie faults. And it also has a comprehensive decal sheet. So like I say, sometimes you get lucky and you get all these detail parts in the box. What are photo etch parts? How are they made? Photo etching refers to the process by which these parts are made. You can see this is a nice thin sheet of really fine details. You can't possibly get this kind of detail part in injection molding plastic, so they do this process. And basically the process is they take a sheet of metal, and I'll use this plastic as an example, and they put a layer of photoresistant material on it. Then they take a negative of the parts and add it to it and they put this into a UV machine, an ultraviolet machine, which hardens the areas that aren't to be removed. Then they put it into a processing or a developing machine and they remove all the excess material. And what you end up with is a nice sheet of photo etch parts, as you can see here. So photo etch parts can be used for all different types of models, ships, aircraft, cars, sci-fi, just any number of things. And there's various manufacturers. As I said, I'm using Edward parts on my Revell Heinkel. So let's take a look at the tools that you need to do this. Working with photo etch and resin parts requires special tools and materials. So you can see I've laid out some of the things that I use here. Different cutting tools, bending tools, um, different adhesives, super glues, burnishers, uh, sanding materials. So let's take a closer look at the tools and materials used with photo etch and resin parts. The first tools that we'll discuss be used with photo etch parts are cutting tools. If you look carefully at a photo etch fret of parts, each part is held in by a small metal tab, a series of them around the part. So what we need to do is cut these tabs off as close to the part as possible. And we can get one shot at it, so we have to be really careful, delicate, and precise with our cuts. So let's look at what kind of tools we'll use to cut these out. 
The first tool we'll look at when cutting photo etch parts are these photo etch scissors. These are by Zeron Corporation and they're for cutting soft metals. They work just like the name implies, like a pair of scissors. These are great for cutting out larger photo etch parts. The second method of removing photo etch parts from a sprue or a fret is to use a very hard surface such as this metal plate and a straight edge cutting tool, either like these X-Acto knives or this tool stock that I've sharpened with different edges. And you place your photo etch fret onto the base or onto the metal plate, then you line up your straight edge tool on the fret and get it as close to the part as possible, then just tap it with the hammer and hit each fret that way and your part will drop out. The advantage here is that you can get a much tighter, closer cut on the part. Photo etch parts often require folding or bending in order to represent a three-dimensional object and it requires special tools to do this. So let's take a look at the tools required to bend photo etch parts. The first bending tool we'll take a look at are bending pliers. These are Tamiya bending pliers. These are their long ones. They come in different lengths. These are great tools. The idea is to get a pair of pliers with a nice sharp edge so that after you cut your photo etch part out, if it needs to be bent, and this part, I don't know if you can see, it has two lines on it for bending. And basically you put the part into your pliers and you line that little bending line up with the edge of the pliers and then bend it either way. Make sure to consult your instructions and make sure you're bending the right, in the right direction because sometimes you only get one shot at it. So bending pliers are a great tool to do simple bends. I have another set of pliers here and these are smaller ones with a nice flat edge on the front. That way I can take smaller parts and bend easily. So that's bending pliers. The next bending tool we'll take a look at are these parts bending jigs. These two pieces, one is from Trumpeter and one is from the Armory. This is a metal one, this one's plastic. The way a jig works is, as you can see, there's different size edges on here. Small ones, medium ones, a large one on this side. So, as I said, this gives you the ability to be more precise with your bend. You loosen up the top piece here and you take your photo etch part you look at the edge and you find out where you need to bend it and you put it right underneath of the jig underneath this top piece and you line up the bend line right on the edge here and then the trumpeter kit comes with these small plastic bending tools which are okay and they go underneath the part and you bend upward and it'll bend this piece or you could use a flat edge razor blade because it's longer get under there and as I bend this upward it bends my part nicely and I get a nice crisp edge. So you can see as I open this, I slide it out, it gave me a really nice bend on the part. So parts jigs, bending jigs are great tools, highly recommend it. Here are some basic tools that all modelers that use photo etch parts should have on their workbench. The most important thing is the surface plate that you work on. I use this metal plate because it's smooth, it's hard, flat, so you should have a really good surface plate to work with. When you bend parts, you should have something to use to bend them. These are angle blocks, parallels, they have a really sharp, good 90 degree angle on them. So I can use them almost like I did with the jig where I put my part down, put the block over it, take my razor blade and bend the part up. So great surface plate, angle blocks, parallels, any metal block that you can use that has a good angle on it. Sometimes parts have to be done round or curved and that's where this brass rod comes in. Determine what diameter you need your part to be annealed or rounded to. Get that diameter rod and basically you put your part down and you bend it or I should say shape it by rolling the brass rod on it and it'll curve around. Things like machine gun barrel jackets, things of that nature. So brass rod comes in really handy. So those are your basic tools. So let's take a look at the adhesives to use for photo etch. Let's look at some of the adhesives used with photo etch parts. It is possible to solder brass to brass. So if you have a photo etch part going to another metal part, you can solder it. But most of the time you're attaching a photo etch part to a plastic part in a model. So you need adhesive. You can use different types. I have different things here like epoxy glue, a two-part epoxy. 
This is good stuff. You mix it one to one, and the advantage of an epoxy glue is you have some working time, plus when it's dry, there is a bit of give, a little bit of flexibility to it. Most modelers use CA or cyanoacrylate glues, which is what we have here. I have different types. There's different thicknesses of CA glue. This is thin. This one here is extra thick. This is what I use most of the time because you can actually see it and dab it on and be able to locate your part. And then you have accelerator, which speeds up the drying time of the glue. The other thing you really should keep in mind is when you put parts on or glue them on, get yourself some really good tweezers. Different sizes, different shapes. You'll use them all the time. And I also put some sanding material down here because when you put a photo etch part on, it's always good to prep the surface where it glues it possible by sanding it a little bit, scratch up the surface, give it a little tooth to apply the glue and hold on. Um, the other material I have here is burnisher or burnishing fluid. This is for darkening parts. So if you have a metal part, let's say nickel silver, and you want it to be dark in the finished model instead of painting it, you can use burnishing fluid to darken it. So that's adhesives for photo etch parts. In addition to the tools that we've discussed for photo etch, this is a really good reference book on how to work with photo etch parts. This is from AK Interactive and it's in their learning series. It's number seven called Photo Etch Parts, The Complete Guide. And it basically shows you how photo etch parts are made and how to use them and so forth. So this is a really, really great reference material or a reference book on photo etch parts, highly recommended. Also, make sure to get some reference material on the subject matter. I have this book on the Heinkel 111 and what you want to look for in reference material is just really good interior photos, especially if you're using photo etch to enhance the interior of your aircraft. This has interior, exterior, has some really great color profiles in it for painting the aircraft. So reference material, really important, and the AK book on photo etch, highly recommended.